420cc horizontal engine by Predator. Okay. We need a key. All right. Okay, guys. Just took it out of the box. Saved you that scene. That's about all you missed. But yeah, this thing is mounted on a piece of birch or something. Cool, man. Awesome. All right, this looks like the same as the other one. This isn't a pre-used one or anything. No shady business. Let's check the oil tank. Nope. I mean, there's a little oil in there, but... I guess first thing we gotta do is get this thing off of the board here. Alright, coming at you inside the shed we have the Predator 420 engine. It's got this cool little uh, electronic starter, which is great. Um, I'm gonna swap this one for the 301cc that comes on the Harbor Freight sawmill. Why did I want to do that? I've been milling a bunch of wood. When you get like a log on there that's about 16 inches or so, and you put that 301 engine on like say oak or ash or something hard like that, it bogs the engine down, the blade slows down even when it's on full throttle. And when that happens, you're not moving the blade as fast as you need to be to get an effective cut. I have a lot of lumber to cut, so I wanted to upgrade the engine. Um, this isn't a bad feature too, that was definitely a nice, uh, I mean you could put an electronic start on the, any other motor, but this is just a, a nice little perk. So anyway, we're going to, basically, the only thing we gotta do is mount the engine on the bandsaw, and then hook up this, this drive shaft here to the existing setup that we have, which is the kind of the bandsaw portion of the sawmill. All right, cool, we got a keyway in here. We got our shaft, and I believe the shaft is the same size as the 301, we will find out. And uh, let's get going on this thing. Let's see what we can do. I will say, right off the bat, it's annoying, this, the oil. There's one on either side, which I guess that's nice. The, the one on the right side has a little stick to look at the, the amount of oil that's in there. But man, that's annoying to, like when this thing is really set in place, it's hard to like get in there and check the oil and to even fill it up. I mean, unless you have like a goofy looking funnel, you need one of those funnels with the adjustable straws on it. We got our sawmill in the shed. And there's Meg. Say hey, Meg. Hey. <laughs> Neighbor Why are you dressed so cold? No, I'm dressed warm. Yeah, okay, for the cold. Yeah. Yeah, our neighbor showed up. Go ahead and make tell the story. Just at the right time. <laughs> yeah. John and I were determining whether or not we could lift this together, and he pulled up. Yeah. And I got out of it. So. <laughs> I had the tractor linked up uh, to this guy to pull it in here. Tractor's over there now. But anyway, I. Um, <clears throat> I had it hooked up here to bring it in here, and then I realized the grapple was not going to come in this. It's just, it was going to be difficult. Anyway, here's the new engine, the 420 by Predator, and that is replacing the 301. And if you look at them, we got, it, this should be, man, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be easy or just like a little annoying. But <clears throat> things like the throttle here, the cord that comes down and the linkage here to hold the the wire and and to clamp it to your adjustment that's the same thing over here this one doesn't have a throttle uh cable so see things like that i'm just trying to get a plan of attack here and i'm really looking forward to getting into this so first step get this one off let's get this yeah. guy off of here and i think i gotta unlink it from the other side before we get started, give you an idea of how this one's on here. 
So engine's there. It's just got four bolts on the bottom. Engine mounts. And then over here, it's got this screw that is welded. And then you adjust. So what that does is move this entire engine linearly left and right this way to put pressure on the, uh, on the pulley system. So let's go see that now. But that's how your saw should look when you open it up. Not much dust in there. Anyway, so <clears throat> yeah, very simple. All this is, is a, that's a centrifugal clutch on a pulley, a V belt groove pulley, which goes around this bandsaw wheel here. And then that drives the blade. Blade goes around this one and this wheel is really just going for a ride. Um, lining things up and the tension is put on this blade here. But the tension for the engine in this here is in the bolt that I just showed you. So I think the first step here would just be getting this belt off, which we've done before, to replace it. And uh, we'll go from there. Well, should I take the blade off or just take this... You know, I don't really need to take the blade off, I don't think. So I could just do this. Put that in there for now. It'll be alright. Okay. Cool. New engine goes on and this thing will get connected. Think first. We need to crack these loose. Oh, it feels loose. side things should be nice and loose man this is a treat working like this on the inside got a chair and everything See this thing? It's got this plate that you could tighten it and it'll pull the engine. If you tighten it, it'll pull the threads through that way. So we're going to keep that there. That's part of the frame. I think we're ready to. We got to get this cable off. Pull that wire through. All right. That's our throttle cable. curious here. Let's see what the new engine looks like in there. That is up. And I have a little bit of clearance issue right here. But that's not really the only issue here. If you look at the mounting plates here, that's a little bit forward this way. So the mounting holes aren't lining up too well. Um, 
I gotta think about this. I might have to modify this plate. Other than that, I mean, this is how much further I have I have as far as travel to go up. So if the whole thing slid toward me a little bit this way, like this move forward this way, I'd, I'd have clearance everywhere. It's pretty clear. Yeah. I don't see anything else interfering anywhere. That's good. Here's the clutch and it's got this like custom collar on here I'm hoping it's just a matter of loosening this guy looks like some thread lock was on there is it the same thread be nice come on now I think it is. It's just a little thread locky. It's got to be the same, right? Come on. Don't hold your breath. Let's clean that off wire wheel it real quick. Is it smaller? That's a smaller. Oh, for crying out loud. The bigger engine has a smaller screw. Wow, that's really surprising. Okay, well, let's not cry about it. We'll just find another bolt somewhere. Is it just the bearing? Is that all it's for? Let's see. It is coming off. It's just really fighting me. It must just be rusted in place. Oh, thank goodness. Did I get it? That's the... Alright, well this clutch plate came off. I'll clean this for sure. Shoes look all right. All right, we're almost off. That's what it was. It's just all sorts of rust on the drive shaft. All right. Not to mention the key is stuck in there. The good news is that clutch fits right on there. So it looks like they got a custom like collar here that slips on for spacing and then your clutch goes on there and then the, the drum on top of that and then your um, the bearing and all that stuff gets held in with that retaining clip. Cool. Oh, at least that's off though. My goodness. That was, that was a chore. Alright. Oh. Seems to be happy where it is. 
let's see, this is the new key for the other. I might as well just leave it with this engine, put a rubber band on it or something. I might repurpose this engine for something down the road. I was thinking of making a small rock crusher, like a jaw crusher. We will see. I'm just squirting the springs here a little bit. It's just WD-40. I wonder how many of you just cringed while I was beating that engine up with my hammer. Sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm not sorry. Alright, let's see. Alright, I just cleaned up everything. Oy, 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 oy. Okay. okay. New shaft. Spacer, that's all that is. Goes right to this it stops there, so all right, let's get the clutch on there. I took all the rust off of it with the wire wheel. happy that's good and then let's put the casing or the drum on there let's get it on no fun for the day look at that loveliness that looks good okay what do i have to do now um now I think everything else, I gotta find the new screw for this shaft. That's a that's a beautiful thing though, it swaps out. It's just a shame that this screw doesn't thread through nicely. So it's got a locking washer and a regular washer for the screw head. Like so. We'll get it all in there. We'll crank it down. We'll put some thread lock on there too. Couldn't find a bolt anywhere, guys. Had to go to the store and get this. So I got some 3 8 inch 24 thread, inch and a quarter long. Oh, bummer. Let's see. That should fit. That's what the manual says it is. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm glad it fits. Anyway, I got a stainless steel. Can you believe these are five, like five bucks for two bolts? Jeez. Okay, um, now I gotta find my washers. There they are on the other bolt. Now this bolt, smaller engine, it's bigger though. But it's pretty close to this guy. It'll work. There, here, and here. And all that's gonna go on there. I gotta clean this off real quick, I forgot. Let's go do that. you hear that in the background it's snowing but it's kind of sleeting at the same time sleet freezing rain whatever it is it's been snowing I got some thread lock here One thing I do need to put on here is the spring ring, but it shouldn't interfere. That's horrible. Oh, jeez. Well, I'm going to fiddle with this till I can get it lined up. Alright, 
that should do it. That's good. What else? Um, now what we got to do is clean up this mess and then I got to make a sketch of this mounting plate and compare it to where... Oh, I got to do this too. It's hiding down there real quick. I actually bought a pair of these. Got it. It's in place. That just holds the bearing in. All right, we're good. Nothing's holding this thing on here, so I kinda gotta be careful. Slip that belt on. Just kind of simulating where it's gonna end up. It's gonna be around there, a little bit tighter than that, but wow, the clearance is good. The belt looks fine. Just hold on to the engine, let's rotate this for a sec. All right, it's lining up in a good spot here. I mean, the belts should be pretty good, but they don't have to be perfect as far as like parallel. They, they have a little forgiveness, but I sh should probably try to keep it as straight as possible. Maximize the life of the belt. Man, look at it outside, guys. As I trip. Killing. While I was at the store today, you can see on my well, you can't see it from here, but I got the uh, gutters for the solar kiln and a bunch of other stuff. All right, so um, wow, it's uh, it's turning into something here. It's starting to is it sticking? Looks like it's sticking. It's not melting right away. All right, I got this. This is from the mill. I forget, I used this for something. I cut out a piece of it for something. So I, I got a couple brackets there. I got this piece here. Now what I need to do is modify that. That's the mounting plate, the old one. That's just the way it worked, the old one. And then this screw here, if you can see, it slid this way for the belt tensioning. So I'm going to have to modify that little piece. I'll take this off in a second, but... I'm going to have to modify this plate. Man, if I could just cut the whole thing and then just bump it out like a half inch this way, I'd be all right. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know if that's going to be what I need to do or not. I think the best approach here is just scratch a template into it. Here, let's go like this. Got the engine on its side a little bit. No oil so far. There we go. Where's that one? The front holes are permanent. I think these are adjustable back here. Alright, let's see what we ended up with. Not bad. It's where I pressed it in there. So the holes are lining up. So all I need to do is relocate these holes away from this back wall. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to cut a section out and just slide it forward. Now when I do that, it's probably gonna, yeah, it'll it'll create a new hole back here, which I don't think it's gonna 
cause any weakness or anything like that. I mean, it will to an extent, but not for this. Um, and then I'll just, so instead of being a straight edge, it'll just kind of like pop out a step like this and we'll relocate these holes a little bit further back. That's the only thing that I could really come up with without being totally destructive. But anyway, underneath, let me show you. Underneath here, it's bent like with a bending break and that is welded to the back wall here. And then there's a spine in the middle and then there's, it's bent here. So it's got three verticals there and a tray hopefully that makes sense so i can't just cut it all the way straight across i gotta kind of cut two sections here all right so let's get to that Let, let's uh i'm gonna mark this out and then i'll cut it you know what i just realized i still got a balloon right here from when i painted that's funny all right um here's what i'm gonna do look at this i use my t-square and it or my, uh, my square, and it's the tip just barely touches that back, so I can't get it <laughs> square against this. So I'm just gonna use the marks on the, uh, on the square here. All right, let's put those teeth there and go, oh, let's go a half inch back. Oh, that's the wrong marker. Where's the good marker? Brian, my marker's dying, man. Got like no tip left i've used it so much all right let's see half inch back is going to be right there I'm trying to be straight because i'm going to weld this back in place i don't want it askew in any way i want it to slide out of there basically i want this to be a nice rectangular piece Alright, let's do it. it it's so cold in here that it that it um feels good when when I'm grinding because the sparks are warming me up. Uh, Alright, I gotta figure out how I'm gonna cut this. Might just have to do it like that and then do a little wiggle waggle, pop it out of there. All right, I gotta move you. I can't get sparks on this lens. Guys, look how ridiculous I look. What do you think? So, you missed it before? I always wa I always kind of take a look at because our road it's rarely traveled so whenever someone goes down I just make sure it's a neighbor if not I want them to know that I see them type thing you know you just live out in the boonies this way it is you want to you know make sure they see you and wave and whatnot I don't know just don't want anybody acting suspicious around here but anyway I go out and I, I just go out like this and I'm like here I'll show you what it looked like I got them just a little bit hanging on the, on the corners there, so I figured I'd just snap them off. I mean that, right? That's good. All right, now, hopefully the plan is just scooting this thing forward a little bit and mounting it where I need to be. I'll just have to fill in the gaps with uh, some weld wire. Just glob it on there. Okay, cool. I think I'm gonna put these on the engine real quick. I'm gonna put them on the engine, bolt them down, leave them kind of loose, and then like set the engine up here where I want it, and then mark here and here, and we'll be good. Let's do it.
the only thing I'm really worried about is the clearance on this exhaust system here. But once I figure out where that needs to be, because that provides the movement this way and this way, I can't adjust that. I can adjust the engine left and right, but I can't adjust it, you know, forward and backwards. So I want to make sure I'm in the right spot here. And uh, once I figure that out, I'll be able to mark this. Um, all right, these are moving around right now. But what I'm really interested to see, this line here was even with this here. And uh, I really just need to know where I can make a mark like right here. And that'll determine how far out the engine sits. Because what I'm trying to do is figure out this clearance right here. And I don't need much, but I, this is as high as the mill goes to. So... It doesn't need to travel anywhere past this point. But what I'm trying to pay attention to is the clearance there, which is very small, and the, the amount that this pulley is sticking out, which looks good here. Whoop. There it is, the, the pulley here. How far it's sticking out into the cavity of the bandsaw system here i had to be a wuss and turn this on i've never done that before <laughs> not this that <laughs> never done that before in this shed but it's cold man i'm really hoping to do some bridging here with the welds i have the gap from the what do you call it from the from the angle grinder but i don't want to Fill it. I just want. To, well, I want to fill it with the wire, the welding wire. I hope I can do that. I haven't tried that yet. Well, we'll see what happens. I have this, um, this piece of angle up here to hold this thing flush and now that it's tacked it's not really moving anywhere all right i'm going to try to start back here maybe i'll do a couple tacks and then i'm i'm going to try to fill this in with wire instead of grabbing a super skinny piece of steel and filling it with that we'll, we'll see how this works i don't know you're in the way though you need to move Holy cow, that's ugly. They got a big hole in the middle there. All right, that'll do it. I'd say that'll hold the small engine. All right, I'm gonna weld up the other one. Oh, I thought I welded it. All right, that's enough globs. Let's clean it up. All right, guys, here it is in its raw state. Not trying to hide any imperfect work. That wire wheel on the angle grinder really gets all the welding balls off out of the way. And then now I'm going to um, probably use a dual purpose wheel. I got, I can't even tell, it's just thicker than like a normal cutoff wheel. These are for grinding and for cutting. Um, but I use them basically just like on their edge here and, and shave this stuff off. So this will remove the bulk of the material, then I'll finish it up with a flap wheel. Leave it there guys, that's going to be plenty strong, doesn't need a mirror finish, 
things to hold up my engine. I guess I could have went further to get rid of these like get rid of this transition line, but what before? It's all flat. Flat enough. Let's make sure the thing fits, huh? Before we paint it. Oh, so I don't have to cut off those mounts again. Okay. Holes lining up here. That one back there is good. I mean, look at the oil. You, you really, I mean, you need a straw in your funnel. I'll stop complaining about it. All right, those are lining up too. A clearance. I mean, we got a sixteenth of an inch there. Can you even see it? <laughs> All right, cool. That'll work. Let's look at the poly in the front. Yes, sir. Take it to the bank. That's gonna... Well, I gotta shift the engine over, but that'll work fine. There's Meg. She's freezing. <laughs> you wuss. It's just the it's shed, It's cold babe. out here. All right. So I got a camera buddy now. Meg's been working on this episode. I've been out here in the freezing cold. Mm -hmm. Meg's been in by the wood stove. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Gonna, gonna get the moment. Oh, I painted it. Whatever. I mean, I didn't want to show painting it. But anyway, I, you know, primed it and then I just painted the engine compartment area. And I'm gonna kind of come back and do this stuff too. I just, I want to get the engine on there. All right, let's go. Okay. Oh. All right. Meow. Here's the moment of truth. Truth? Truth? What is it? Truth. Moment of truth. truth. Washer. Now this one doesn't have oil room. This one does. Oh yeah. That was a satisfying uh, bolt drop. Pull the yeah. Check out my clearance right there, Meg. By the exhaust. Oh. How's that? That's pretty close. Tight, 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 tight. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's slip the belt on. I'm going to pull the engine this way just to loosen. Want to come over here real quick, Meg? Yeah, I was, I, I was kind of like, oh, you didn't have to take off the blade when I was... No. Nope. It's going to go around there, but that's where that spacer comes in. You tighten it up when yeah, like, we're all pretty much done here. I just have to tighten that up, mm -hmm. and then it'll pull the engine toward me, like toward this way, Yeah. and get the belt nice. So it. this is essentially... Gotcha your belt tensioning adjustment right mm -hmm. here because you're pulling the engine from underneath you're pulling the foot see you can this whole thing will slide forward here's my solution to the hard to reach um what do you call it oil location are we gonna add gas anything else hopes and dreams well obviously so we gotta mount the battery now yeah yeah we got a this we got from walmart it's one of those everstart lawn batteries it's got a 300 cold cranking amp and about 30 to 36 somewhere whatever it's in the manual um i think it's the right specs 12 volt battery, so what we gotta do, 
Um, I like the wires out of the way so they're not like in here in front by my hands. That's why I turned it around. So I got the positive and negative back here. Negative has to go to the engine mount somewhere on the engine. doesn't really matter. And then the positive goes to there's a little relay here before the starter motor. So there's just a small cable there. I'm going to use an old, well not old, it's really not even used. I have a dryer cord cable that's the proper size um, that I'm going to repurpose for this. And uh, we're going to hook it up. But as far as mounting the battery, I just had this piece of, um, I bent this the other day because I was trying out a bending brake. And uh, I have something here that I'm going to weld a bracket underneath that goes across. So there's some support there. And then in the front here, Meg had the idea of doing something like this. So that the battery can't come forward like this, but it would be at this level. So it would hold across this way. So we're creating a little a little battery seat in here. And um, what we could also do if we notice it's like shifting around and whatnot, we could we could always add in something like a little tie that just goes across the top of it so it can't bounce around on us. But I don't see that being a problem. So I'm going to get to this and then we're going to hook up the electronics and uh, throw some gas in there and then we'll uh, fire it up, hopefully with the starter. I notice there's no kill switch on here. This is the kill switch. So even if you don't use the battery starter function, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but you would still need the key to put it to the on position to pull crank the engine. This is the manual start mode as well as the electronic. Hmm. It's the engine switch regardless. That's interesting. Yeah, this, the kill switch should go right here, but it's it's got a false plug in there, right there. Ah. Guys, check this out. That's the battery. This is one of those I-beams from that mobile home that I broke apart and made the mill out of. Look at this. Perfect fit. So, I'm going to have this welded to the back wall and that's going to be the seat. Which will also prevent the battery from shifting right or left. Um, but yeah, I love when stuff like that happens. I think a 3 inch bracket would be more than plenty. And we just need a little piece on the front. That's it. A little piece of angle. There we go. Could use this. Use a hunk of that. That could be the front. All right. Good deal. Let's cut it. I'm just going to set it on these magnets and weld it up. Spacer. Like a two millimeters something. Something. Something, something, something. Oh, it's not 
warm at all. Okay. So it goes in here, prevents this movement and prevents it from falling out too. I don't really see a need to tie it down, but we could certainly do that pretty easily. Just put like a little loop right here and I mean, I don't even think it's necessary. It's not gonna go anywhere. That'll do its job. Just prevent the battery from coming this way and prevent it from scooting left to right. And if we need to, I guess I could always add um, maybe a little loop, a little tie down here and a corresponding one like back here, something like that. I can even just go here, just come over. Yeah, that'll work well. Let's call it good there, just in case something's funky. All right, gas cap on key. Boom, what an interesting key, look at that. Hunk of junk. <laughs> Might as well use I'm it. pretty sure I could carve that. <laughs> pretty sure I could start this with a wooden skewer. <laughs> Uh, fuel on start mode let's let's give it a go it with the key. <laughs> I wonder if I have to choke it again. Let's see. Probably. Choke it. My shoulder can rest. <laughs> All right. That's awesome. Cool. Cool. It works, guys. My, the battery box thing came out really good. The I-beam back there and like the front, I, I don't think I'm going to have to do anything else. You don't even notice it's, it's pretty there. much on there. Yeah, it's great. It looks like it was built in. Yeah. I think that's pretty slick. I don't like that the water's over it. I mean, maybe we can move that. Maybe the water could be over here or something. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, really pleased. Um, but here's the thing. We got a lot of rain coming for like the next foreseeable future, really. Um, I want to get this up on the mill. Do you want to do that now? Do you want to get it up there or? Whatever. Whatever. Either way, I mean, you have the skid steer out and okay. whatnot. We're going to go put it on the mill, but I don't have enough light tonight, guys, to, to show you a sample of a log. Uh, next episode, we're going to continue on the solar kiln build, but I'm also going to, I can't help myself. I got to throw a log up there and just try this thing out. Um, so we'll start that episode um, with this and, and some more kiln building. We got the gutter stuff for it and a lot of other things coming. So we're going to wrap up that project as soon as we can.
guys. This is, I upgraded the water feature. The other one broke, it froze. This one did not freeze yet. So, it's a Sunny D container. <laughs> Whatever works. Yep. Two altitude kits. Cool. Interesting. It's good to keep. Maybe I'll buy a taller mountain one day. You know, I get the thing all set, then I kick it. All right, there. Now, I think. What is that? Do you hear that? Yeah. Are those coyotes? Those are sheep. It's gotta be a sheep. If that's a coyote, he's super drunk. <laughs> that's a sheep. Is it dying? <laughs> 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 